Hey everyone, Tendra here. In today's video, we'll be looking at the week of February 20th to February 26th, so let's take a look and see what I did. This week, our weekly quest was time walking, and since I have all my characters to level 70, and I had managed to get the infinite time reaver a bit back, I found myself not messing with this nearly as much. My primary goal for doing these now is to passively farm transmog, and it seems to work pretty well. I normally get a few pieces every time time walking rolls around. The biggest thing I did this week was still working on getting my alt characters into veteran gear. For that I've been going over to the Emerald Dream and doing the three weekly repeatable quests. These will award you a piece of veteran gear, and to me this feels like the best time investment for getting veteran gear. This week I started off with 21 characters that still needed a full set of veteran gear, and by the end of the week I was down to 17. The ones I finished this week were a Horde Shaman, a Horde Mage, an Alliance Warrior, and an Alliance Warlock. And with a little luck and my nose to the grindstone, hopefully I have all my characters in veteran gear before the next patch hits. The last thing I did this week was work on my weekly farms, so let's take a look and see how I did. I started off this week by running Andorra's The Burning Throne. I am after the site of the M Maker, and since I'm after the red version, I have to do this on Mythic. So I headed over there, and I worked my way back to Argus the M Maker. I took him down and got a dump to number 98 on the site, but again, I didn't see it drop this week, so I'll have to come back here next week. Next up on my list was the head of Minrod. This drops in Alduar. On my way up there, I stopped and looked for the Time Loss Proto Drake, and again he wasn't up this week. So once I got up to Alduar, I headed in and worked my way back to Yogg's Saron. I took him down and got my attempt on the head of Mimron, but again this week I didn't see it drop, so this is another one I'll have to come back to next week. The next mount I went after was Gmod. This drops in battle for Desire Lore, and depending on what difficulty of grade you do this on, depends on who it drops off of. If you do it on Mythic, it's going to drop off High Tanker or Mechadork, and if you do it on any other level, it will drop off Jaina Proudmoore. This week I did it on LFR, so I had to kill Jaina to get a chance at this. This week I didn't see it drop, but it did give me attempt number 28, so I'll have to come back here next week and just hope my luck's a little better then. The next mount I went after was the Glacial Tidestorm, and this mount only drops in one place. That's off Jaina Proudmore in the battle for Desire Lore on Mythic. Right now I'm not able to solo this, so I have to find a group in Group Finder for it. Once I do find a group, I get in there, and we make pretty quick work of her. This week with taking her down, I got attempt number 25 on the mount. Again, I didn't see it drop, so I'll have to come back here next week. I was finally on my last mount farm for the week. Since I finished up the Mechagon Peacekeeper on my multi-character farm last week, I needed to figure out a new one I was going to do this week. And the one I decided to go with was the Hellfire Inferno from Nighthold. If you're not sure what my multi-character farm is, that's where I take 13 characters every week to the same instance or raid until I see the item or mount time after drop. So let's take a look and see how I did this week. Repent! 
Well, first week of the multi-character farm and I didn't see them out. But as you can see, I didn't take all warriors this time. I took one of each class. I figured I'd change it up a little bit, and most of these characters haven't ran this. They should be getting transmog, which is always pretty great. And with no luck this week, I'll just have to come back next week, and hopefully I have a little better luck then. And this week we have another transmog set that's associated with Corthia. This time it's the Court Inquisitor's Vestments. This again will be associated with your Ventir Renowned. With this you're going to get four different sets. Going from left to right, you'll have the Renowned Quartermaster, the Death Advance, the Corthia set, and the Renowned set. So to obtain the Renowned Quartermaster set, the first thing you'll have to do is get your Renowned to 60 with Ventir. After you have that, just head over to Sinfall and make sure you have 10,000 Anima and you can purchase it. Our next set comes from Death's Advance. This is sold right at Keeper's Respite, located in Corthia. The only thing you'll need for this is your Death's Advance Rep to Exalted, and your Renowned with Venthyr 260. Once you have both of them, just take 6,000 Stygia over to the Quartermaster in Corthia, and you can buy this. Our next set is from Corthia. Once you open up Corthia, you'll be able to do random daily quests. Some of them quests will award you a piece of gear. As long as you keep at it, you should be able to finish this set in no time. The last set is Renowned. You'll automatically get this when you hit level 60 Renowned with Venthyr. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. You can click on subscribe. Thanks for coming by and watching it. I'm going to send a hi to my best friend, and you all take care.